fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Stan Beeler, a rancher who was also the leader of a mysterious band of outlaws, was worried. A citizens' committee in the county seat of Cactus Bend had called a meeting. With several members of his gang, Beeler waited at his isolated ranch for the return of a messenger who had been dispatched to town to learn what was happening. Here here comes Joe. Riding plenty fast. Something important must have happened at that meeting. Well, Joe, what's the news? Plenty, boss, plenty. Well, let's hear it. They asked Bert Lawson if he'd take over as sheriff to fill out the unexpired term. They told him they could get the governor to appoint him if he'd take the job. Bert Lawson, huh? What did Lawson say? He asked time to think it over. I think he would have accepted on the spot, except for his wife. I was watching him, and I could tell she was begging him not to take it. Yeah, I can see why she wouldn't want him to. It was her uncle who was sheriff until we bumped him off. That's right. That's why he'd get tough. So Lawson wants to think it over, huh? <laughs> he said he'd give him his answer in a week. Good. Yeah, that's in our favor. Maybe we'll be able to convince him it's not smart to be sheriff around here. Well, how do you mean? Joe, did Lawson and his missus start back to the ranch when you did? I don't think so. I left as soon as the meeting started to bust up, but I saw Lawson and his wife ride into town in a buckboard. I imagine they planned on taking time to do some shopping while they're in town. Then that'll give us a chance to start convincing them. You better turn down the job. Now listen, you fellas, while I tell you what I want. Though. All right, let's go. Well, Zotto, what happened at the meeting in Cactus Bend? Uh, plenty happened, Kimasabi. People there asked young fella named Lawson. Toto told the Lone Ranger how the citizens of Cactus Bend had asked Bert Lawson, a young rancher, to take the job of sheriff and restore law and order to the county. When he had finished, he said, But that not all, Kimasabi. Oh, how do you mean, Toto? Well, me watch, like you say. Just as meet and finish, me see man named Joe Ward go to picket line. Him get on horse and ride away fast. Joe Ward, huh? He's a petty crook who hangs around town. That's right. Me get on scout and follow Ward fella to ranch owned by Stan Beeler. Oh, what happened there? Oh, me not know. Me afraid them see me and know me follow Joe Ward. Me come tell you. Beeler must have sent him to the meeting to learn what was happening. That's what me think. 
You say Lawson asked a week to think it over before he'd give his answer? Not right. His wife not want him to take job. Her uncle was a sheriff and was murdered. No wonder she doesn't want her husband to risk the same fate. Ah. And what we do now? I'll have a talk with her, Tonto. If she can be persuaded, her husband will take the job. I have every confidence in his ability to clean up this county. Yes, Silver. Me know where Bert Lawson branch is. Good. Steady, Silver. All right, let's go, Tonto. Come on, Silver! Come on, Silver! No, and the buckboard's not here. Well, let's get busy and get out of here as quick as we can. What are your orders, Stan? You see that big bay gelding yonder? Yeah. Let him have it. You got him. Now pick off that gray mare next to the corral gate. Here it goes. Good shot, Pete. Now take them two empty cartridges and set them on the sill of the door there. I'll do it. Easy. Like this, boss? That's it. I'll get Marty, Joe. All right. I think that's all the warning Bert Lawson will need. Well, let's get out of here. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. We're getting home a lot later than I figured, Laura. It's almost dark. Oh, oh boy. It's cold. Here we are, Lori. You put up the team and I'll get supper started. Bring in the supplies after you've fed the stock. All right, honey. It won't take long to feed the stock. Get up. Come on. Get up. A few moments later, Laura Lawson heard her husband enter the front door. Bert, look what I found on the door sill. What is it, Laura? I stepped on something as I came in. When I lit the lamp, I went back to see what it was. I found these two empty shells. Yeah, I see. Bert, what's the matter? I hate to tell you what I just found in the corral. What is it? Tell me. The gelding and the gray mare are dead. Dead? Yeah, shot. With those shells. Oh, that's horrible. But who'd do such a thing? The crooks who are running this county. The same crooks who murdered your Uncle Jim. Laura, this is a warning to me to turn down that job. And it means you'll be killed just like Uncle Jim was. But promise me you'll not take the job. But, Laura, I'm not going to run away from a thing like this. Everyone will hear about it. If I don't take that job, they'd call me a coward. And I'm not a coward. But listen to me, you... Someone's riding in. It's two men. I can hear their voices. Oh, Bert, do be careful. Maybe it's someone who'll try to kill you. they try to come in here, I'll have the drop on them. Put out the lamp until we know who it is. All right. Door's unlocked. Come on in. Keep him covered, Bert. I've come to talk to you, Lawson. I'm asked, man. Get your hands up while you're healthy, mister. There's no need to be alarmed. I'm not an outlaw. Get your hands up or I'll pull this trigger. Very well. But please hear what I have to say. I'll do the talking. And I talk a lot better when I know who I'm looking at. Bert, what are you going to do? Take the mask off this back trailer's face. You must have a good reason for wearing it. I'd advise you not to try it, Lawson. I told you I came here as a friend. I'll decide that when I see your face. Do not take off that man. That Indian. Uh, I have his gun, Toto. I'll release him. Uh, now you listen. Uh, him not hurt you. You've got the drop on me now, mister, but you'll never get away with this. You're the outlaws who shot my stock while I was in town today. No, we're not. But Toto and I trailed the ones who did. They went into town. You, you saw them? No, Mrs. Lawson, we didn't. We arrived too late to catch them. We trailed them into town where we lost them. Too many tracks in the dust there. Now, here, Lawson, take your gun, but Uh, holster it. I don't get this. This Indian jumps me, and then you give me back my gun loaded. I told you we were here to help you. Now, I want you to listen to what I have to say. The Lone Ranger explained that he had valuable information that might lead to uncovering the ring of criminals who had been operating in the county. And he urged the young rancher to accept the job as sheriff. Why are you so interested in me being sheriff? I have reasons. Good reasons. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet you have. 
You think you can get me to help you run out one gang so you can take over yourself? Bert will have nothing to do with you, and I'll never let him be sheriff. Mrs. Lawson, you were your uncle's favorite niece, weren't you? Yes, I was. And I don't want my husband murdered like Uncle Jim was. Let me show you something. Did your uncle ever show you one of these? Let's see what it is, Laura. Oh, a bullet. A silver bullet? You've seen one like it before? Laura, it's like the one you wear on a chain about your neck. The one your Uncle Jim gave you. Yes. Now I'm beginning to understand. What color is your horse, mister? And what do you call him? He's white and his name is Silver. Are you... You mean you're... Bert, this man is the Lone Ranger. He's the best friend my Uncle Jim ever had. The following morning, Judge Asa Hanley, chairman of the Citizens Committee, was surprised when answering a knock on his office door, he saw young Bert Lawson standing in front of him. Morning, Judge. Bert Lawson. Where? Well, come in. What brings you back to town so soon? I decided to take that job. Well, well, this is a surprise. The way you talked yesterday, I was sure you'd turn it down. What changed your mind, Bert? Well, when Laura and I got home last night... We found two horses shot. Bert Lawson explained briefly about his horses being brutally killed and the two empty shells that had been left as a warning to him. But he made no mention of the Lone Ranger's visit. I'll be doggone. That's that's terrible, Bert. But I can see how it would make you change your mind. Certainly did, Judge. A real man won't take stuff like that. But how did you persuade Laura to let you take the job? She was sure set against it yesterday. Uh, She just changed her mind like I did. That's fine. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, When can you start to work? Immediately. The first thing I'm going to do is run every crook out of town. Now, now, Bert, don't do things too fast. You might give them warning first. No, Judge, I believe in action. If the town is rid of them, they can't cause trouble. If I give them a chance, they may get me first. Uh, Very well. It's your job and a tough one. You'll have to solve it your own way. Now, hold up your right hand. Like this? That's it. Now, repeat after me. I, Bert Lawson... I, Bert Lawson... Do solemnly swear... Do solemnly swear... Meanwhile, in the Bright Lights Cafe, tough little Joe Ward sized up a bronzed and muscular stranger attired in the garb of a cowman. But the little crook was particularly attracted by the ivory handles of two six-guns protruding from expensive holsters at the stranger's belt. Them's right fancy guns you got there, mister. What's your interest in them? Oh, nothing. Only I was just thinking. <laughs> thinking what? If you want to keep them, you'd better start moving out of town. For what reason? I just heard we got a new sheriff within the past 30 minutes. He don't like strangers. After he takes their hardware, he runs them out of town. Is that the new sheriff coming in now? Yeah, that's him. Well, I'll see you later. Hold on there, mister. I'm leaving, sheriff. I just stopped in to pay up my bar bill. I told you to get out of town and stay out. Don't, don't, oh. don't hit me again. I'll go. Just a minute, sheriff. What right have you to run people out of town? Well, look who's here. Where did you come from? That's none of your business. You'd better come along, mister. You'll get in a jam. He's in a jam right now. Come along. I'll point the way out of town to you. Take your hands off me. Why, you big mug? Look out, the sheriff's going for a gun. No, you don't. I'll take those guns and unload them. You might hurt someone, Sheriff. (laughs) Uh, There, that's better. Don't be in any hurry to reload, Sheriff. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Walking leisurely from the Bright Lights Cafe, the Lone Ranger, disguised as a common, went to the hitch rack and mounted the great horse Silver. As he rode unconcernedly down the street, he was well aware that little Joe Ward had mounted his own horse and was following. It was not until he was out of sight of the town that Joe Ward caught up with him. Oh, what the hell? Oh, 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 oh. Well, what do you want? I just wanted to thank you for taking my part when the sheriff started pushing me around. I thought for a minute you was going to get shot. If you were smart, you wouldn't waste time thanking me. That tin star will have a posse on your trail before you know it. I know he will. Only he'll be after you first. <laughs> I doubt that. You doubt it? Say, you're kind of cocky, aren't you? No, I'm just a judge of sheriffs, that's all. How do you mean? Well, after the slapping around I gave him, he'll have to do something to save face. But I don't think he'll bother with me. He'll be satisfied to get you. After all, the trouble started over you. I see what you mean. He'd do that, too. Where are you headed? Oh, nowhere in particular. Just drifting. Why? How'd you like to tie in with a good bunch? I'd have to see the bunch first. If you're a sample of it, I'm not interested. Oh, I'm not the boss of it, but I think the boss might be interested in a tough hombre like you. He should be, now that they've got a new sheriff around here. <laughs> uh, how about riding along with me? We can go up the creek and throw off a posse in case the sheriff gets one started our way. Very well. You lead the way. Come on, big fellow. Get it. Arriving at the secluded ranch hideout of Stan Beeler, Joe's pride in having discovered a sheriff baiting gunman was somewhat dampened by Beeler, who was far more interested in the fact that Bert Lawson had taken the job as sheriff of Cactus Bend. I've told you before, never bring anybody here without my permission. But, boss, we both had to get out of town quick, and this hombre's tough. You were saying the other day you could use a couple of hard hombres. Yeah, maybe I can, but right now I can't be bothered with him. I've got work to do. Joe and Pete. Yeah? Yes, yeah, Stan? You're going along with me. Rest you stick around here. Talk to that new hombre and see what you make of him. Right. Stan, where are we going? Last night we warned Bert Lawson not to take the sheriff's job. He didn't take heed. Well, now I'm riding to warn him he better resign the job. And I think he'll listen this time. Meanwhile, Tonto rode up to Bert Lawson's ranch house to be greeted by the new sheriff's wife, Laura. Hello, Tonto. How? I've been on pins and needles waiting for you to ride in from town. Uh, we got plenty of news to tell. Did the plan work out as the Lone Ranger and Bert planned it last night? Isn't that right. Me tell all about it. All right, come into the house. I have a meal ready for you. And as you eat, you can tell me about it. Uh, me plenty hungry, too. Here you are, Ray. Pull up your horses. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you stopping here for, Stan? Take a look up toward the ranch house yonder. What about it? See that paint horse standing out front? It's got a saddle on it. Yeah, you're right. I never paid it no heed. It means the sheriff's wife's not alone. Someone's there with her. <laughs> Come on, dismount you. Yeah, you see that? <clears throat> what are you aiming to do, Stan? I'm going to sneak up to the house and find out who's inside. Joe. Yeah, boss? You stay here with the horses till I whistle for you. Sure. Beat you go with me. Now let's tie bandanas over our faces so we'll not be recognized. What about the gunny sack we brought along to put over Mrs. Lawson's head? Now I have it here in my saddle. There. You ready? Ready. I'd right, keep to cover and don't make a sound. You keep out of sight, Joe, until you hear from me. Right, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lone Ranger pretended to knock Bert down in front of everyone. <laughs> That's right. Lone Ranger take bullets from Sheriff's gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could have seen that. It's plenty funny. Only people not think it funny. <laughs> Them think it big fight. <laughs> but, Tonto, how do you know Joe Ward took the Lone Ranger to Stan Beeler's ranch? Well, me see Joe Ward follow Lone Ranger out of town. Me follow, too. Joe Ward stop and make talk. Then them ride and crick to leave no trail. Yes. Well, me think me know where them go. Me not follow and crick. 
Me ride to place near Beeler Ranch and watch. Soon me see Joe Ward and Lone Ranger ride to ranch house. <laughs> and then, then me come here. Well, Tonto, <laughs> I'm certainly glad you did. Hello, Mark. Who are you? Get your hands up, both of you. I've got the engine covered, boss. Take care of Mrs. Lawson. Oh, you leave her alone. Who are you? What are you doing here? Our sister just quiet down. And you, engine, one more word and we'll put a bullet through you. Keep the woman covered while I tie up this redskin with the larry I took from her saddle. Steady, engine. <laughs> Having no desire to identify himself, Stan Beeler made no mention of the Lone Ranger, but there was no doubt in his mind that the cowman Joe Ward had bought to the ranch was the famed mask rider of the plains. Well, all right, boys, let's go. An hour later, the Lone Ranger was seated at a table playing cards with the men Stan Beeler had left behind when he heard the distant whinny of a horse, which was immediately answered by the whinny of the great horse Silver. Instantly, he was aware of approaching danger, but his eyes betrayed no sign of concern. Even when one of the men looked at him coldly and said, Your horse answered that whinny, stranger. Did you hear him? Yeah, I heard him. Yes, I heard him. <clears throat> Someone must be riding in. I'll take a look. Never you mind. Just keep your seat, mister. I'll take the look, see. Suit yourself. Who is it, Lefty? Well, Stan and Joe Ward. Ain't Pete and Mrs. Lawson with him? No, they're not. Huh? Here they come riding in. Something must have happened. Well, what do you mean? The boss sure looks upset about something. The curiosity of the outlaws overcame their vigilance as they crowded to the front door of the ranch house to see Stan Beeler and Joe Ward hurriedly dismount and stride toward them. Something happened, boss? Yeah, huh? Put up your lip, Lefty. I don't get sore. I just ask a question. I'm asking the questions. Where's that hombre who rode in here with Joe before we left? Him? What? Well, he... Hey, he's gone. He was here just a second ago, sitting right there. Then he can't be far away. Get moving to find him, but watch out for his gun. He must have went out the back door. I told you to keep your eye on him. Well, why are you so upset about him? You'd be upset, too, if you knew who he is. Hey, he's got to his horse. Hey, there he goes. He's right a man. He's heading for that arroyo. Open fire. Got him. Shoot before it's too late. Shoot, Joe. Shoot. Oh, never mind. Never mind. He got into that arroyo. You'd have got him if you hadn't been so slow. I was trying to take aim. Yeah, you were trying to take aim. Now he's got away. Come here, Joe. Now, ah. ah, boss, lay off. I'll lay off. We're not finished no, with you. No, no, oh, no. Why'd you suck him, boss? To teach him never to trust a stranger. That hombre who just rode out of here is a lone ranger. Lone ranger? Yeah, that's right. Means we've got to clear out of here pronto. But where's me? Guarding the masked man's Indian partner and the sheriff's wife. They're waiting over in the south draw for me. Now get to your horses and we'll go finish them off. Oh, easy, steady. Fine scout, big fellow. Fine scout. Knowing that Toto's horse was nearby, the Lone Ranger spoke to the big white stallion, Silver, urging him to find scout. In answer to Silver's neigh, he heard a distant whinny. That's scout. Come on, big fella. As they raced into the draw where Pete was guarding Toto and Laura Lawson, the outlaw whipped out his gun and fired. Pete shot went wild as the Lone Ranger, taking steady aim, fired. His bullet streaking to hit the outlaw's gun hand, knocking his weapon into the air. Hold oh, oh, oh. oh, you hate Easy, big fella. I'll have you free in a moment. I'll release Tonto first. Uh, when we get near ranch, we tell Scout to call Silver. Him winning. Yes, I heard him and understood, Tonto. Now you're free. Cutting the ropes that bound Tonto, the Lone Ranger then turned toward Laura Lawson. If I free you, Mrs. Lawson, Tonto will stand guard. Beer and his men will be riding in any time now. Please hurry. You'll never get out of this alive, masked man. Stan and his gang will get you. Here come gang now, Kimasabi. Mrs. Lawson, get behind the cover of those rocks. Right. Hello. Uh, Take one of my guns. Uh, they're shooting at us. Why don't we run from them? It's too late for that. By getting behind those rocks, we may be able to hold them off. Open fire, Tonto. Uh. As the Lone Ranger and Toto opened fire, the outlaws drew rein sharply, looking to Stan Beeler for orders. What do we do, Stan? Rush him? No, we don't want to have to take a risk like that. We'll scatter around those rocks, try to pick them off. Hey. Oh! Hey. hey, look, Stan, over there. Oh, it's the sheriff and the posse. We've got to make a run for it. We haven't got a chance of running, Stan. We're caught between two fires. Taken by surprise, Stan Beeler hesitated for a moment. He saw the sheriff's posse riding in on one side and knew that the Lone Ranger and Toto blocked his escape on the other. Surrender. Take the consequences, Beeler. Yeah, we quit, mister. Throw down your guns, man.
Within a few minutes, Stan Beeler and his gang were riding toward Cactus Bend as prisoners of the armed posse. But Sheriff Bert Lawson and Judge Hanley remained behind to hear what the Lone Ranger had to say. While Beeler and Joe Ward were away from the ranch, the other outlaws did some boasting. How do you mean? They told about the crimes they committed. They even disclosed that their loot is hidden in the hay in Beeler's barns. You'll find it there. And I thought Stan Beeler was a respectable rancher. Mr. Bert and I want to thank you for all you've done. Why, if it hadn't been for you, I'd never have let him become sheriff. He'll make a good one. And Bert. Yeah? I hope I didn't hurt you when I hit you while we were in the cafe. <laughs> no, you didn't. But I made everyone in the place think you'd have kill me. <laughs> well, our work is done. Adios, my friend. Adios, Adios Mr. Adios. 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 Sheriff. Sheriff, do you mean to say that's the man who knocked you down and disarmed you? That's right, Judge. You see, Judge, he and Bert planned it that way so he could fool Joe Ward into taking him to Beeler's ranch where he could get information about the gang. You don't say. Who is that masked man? Why, he's the best friend my Uncle Jim ever had when he was sheriff. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 